Hi there, and welcome to our very first episode of Science of the Gospel. My name is Buki Bash, and I am your host for the show. You may be wondering what the show is about. Now, this is the show where we get to talk about science facts and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. We bring the science like we know it today, the science in the textbooks, the science in the lab, the science like we know it in the classroom. And then we bring the word of God and we put it together in a way that you can understand, in a way that you can relate with, in a way that you can connect. And you're going to have an amazing time in this entire season. This is our very first episode and you want to stay hooked to this entire season because we are going to be talking about so many amazing things that probably you have never heard of before and even if you have heard you never saw it in that light or in that perspective science of the gospel is that show that brings the reality of the word of god to you from the science perspective you don't want to miss a single day or a single show right now we're just going to take a short break and when we return we will get into the topic of today don't go away Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of the Gospel. If you are just tuning in, you're tuning in just at the right time. Now, this is the show where we're going to talk about the science facts and the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And today is our very first episode on the entire season. And we are really, really going to be setting the foundation of everything we're going to be talking about. When you hear science and when you hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, oftentimes people think it's not connected. But guess what? The word of God is the first science that you can ever really learn. But you know, because of the way the world is structured and the way the society is structured, people tend to conform to the format that is already available and then they take the word of the word of God as though it's something different from you know science like we learn it but really the word of God made the whole world and today's topic is very 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 significant to everything else we're going to be discussing in this season of science of the gospel so you want to stay hooked till the end and you want to stay hooked to every episode of this show now today we're going to be looking at the subject of the reality of the human soul that is in connection to quantum physics and quantum mechanics now don't worry we're not going to talk about so many science jargons so don't be afraid we're going to keep it simple we're going to keep it straight and we're going to keep it very very easy for you to connect with and to relate with so when you hear quantum physics or quantum mechanics what do you think they're really talking about basically what they're really talking about is just studying the nature of matter at the very smallest level of existence. I mean, any, anybody that studied basic science in school, because I know some of the viewers all around the world may not have you know, a perfect comprehensive knowledge of science, but basic science study will let you know that the material world that we live in consists of smaller elements like atoms so quantum physics really studies the material world at an atomic level where it's not visible to the optical eyes but it does affect the way our material world functions it does affect the rules and the laws that govern this world as we see it and we experience it in the material world so quantum um, physics goes to the very tiniest bit to what is inside the atom what is inside the nucleus of the atom what is inside what is inside the nucleus of the atom and they get to find out what exactly is it that really makes up this big and large material world that we see but guess what it's already written in scripture for us even though today's science is just coming to realize it it's been in the scripture all the time and i'm sure you can guess the scripture i'm talking about go straight to hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. it says for we understand that the world was framed by the word of god that the things that we see were not made from things that appear and guess what today's quantum physics agrees that the material world is made from non-material i mean for someone reading that scripture, one may not have been able to connect it quickly and directly to quantum physics. But yeah, that's why we're here on Science of the Gospel. We're bringing the scripture and we're bringing the science and we're bringing it together. It's the same thing. What quantum physics tells us today is that the material the world that we see, 
that we experience as matter is actually made from non-material. Really, really, really. That doesn't really make any logical sense. Thinking about it logically, it's not logical. I mean, how can you tell me that something that I can actually see, I can touch, is not material? I, I mean, what it's made out of is not material. Oh, no, that's not real. That's not practical. But guess what? That's the reality. And even the word of God affirms it to be true. So we're not really depending on the science. We're really depending on the word of God because the word of God said it first. And then the science, like we know, affirms it to be so. So how does that relate to you? How does that connect to you? I mean, what is, what's the relationship between the reality of quantum physics and you watching me out there? Now, let me tell you, it comes to this very popular formula, very simple formula. E is equals to mc squared. Yes, you might have heard of that before. It's very popular, it's very common. E is equals to mc squared. What does that mean? E is energy, m is mass, c is the speed of light squared. Of course, the speed of light is a constant. So if we separate the speed of light, we can as well say that E is equals to m, meaning that energy is equals to mass. Okay, now, okay, let me just stop all this formula and stop all this physics. Let me just go straight to the point. Bottom line is, Energy is equals to mass. And you know, in the world of quantum physics, in the world of quantum mechanics, they study matter more as energy as compared to mass. Although it's like they, they study matter as not just as material, but also as energy. Let me not say more as energy because it does behave like a particle and it also behaves like a wave. So when it behaves like a particle, it's seen as matter or material. But then when it behaves like a wave, it's seen more as energy than it is material. So really, matter is energy and matter is also particle. But the question that I asked earlier, matter is energy, matter is particle. How is that related to me? How is that connected to my life? How is that significant to my life experience? So now this physical world that we live in is a material world. And guess what? Even your physical body is matter. I'm talking about your hand, your head, your legs. Everything is matter. Your entire physical body is actually matter. It's a very large and massive molecular structure of matter. So the very fundamental principles of quantum physics does apply to you as a person. So as much as it applies to everything physical in the world, whether it's a phone, whether it's a table, a chair, a TV set, whatever material thing it can be, as much as it's a particle, as much as it is matter, it is also energy. Meaning that it is the same thing but it exists in two forms, in the form of matter and in the form of energy. So that means that as a physical person, as a physical being, you can as well say you exist in two forms according to quantum physics. But we know that the word of God reveals much more to us and we're still going to get into that. But you see, let's just stay on the science for now. Let's just stay on the physics. Because the physics tells us that everything that is material has an energy equivalent. Now, that begins to tell us something. That begins to bring a perspective to us. It begins to tell us, okay, there's a way we should start seeing ourselves and start thinking about who we really are and what we really are. So, what does this bring? What consciousness does this bring? Does that mean I'm a two-dimensional being? Does that mean I'm a three-dimensional being? Of course, we can tell from the Word of God, from what the Word of God describes, that a human being is not just a physical body, it's body, soul, and spirit. But connecting it to science and today's quantum physics, you're not just a body, you're also energy. You also exist as energy. Okay, you might have heard that before, but if you're hearing it for the first time, just chill. It's not a big deal. It's good news. But guess what? You need to actually recognize and acknowledge the fact that you are not just a physical body. And that energy part of you is such a vital part of your life. And when you don't relate with it and connect with it and understand it, you know, life may look to you as unreal. Let's go back to the scripture we started with at the beginning. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 3. We said that we understand that the worlds were framed at the word of God. So that the things that we see are made out of things which do not appear.
You can read it in other translations, but the bottom line is this. Your physical body that you can see only exists because there is an unseen part of it that makes it work as seen. And that is fundamentally the energy part of it. So the energy part of your life is really inseparable from the material part of your life. And oftentimes, as a young child, I used to have this... Um, lost knowledge or how will I call it now I used to wonder that's the better word I used to wonder my soul they say I have a soul where's my soul what is my soul I mean it was like very very mysterious to me but you see it's it really the way I will define it or the way I would explain it to people is that part of you that is not material but that part of you that is energy I'm sure you want to know more about that part right now let's just take a short break and when we return from this break, we will talk more about that part of you that is not matter, but that part of you that is energy. Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of the Gospel. If you are just tuning in, we have been having an amazing time. We have been talking about quantum physics and the relationship between quantum physics and your physical body. And I was telling you about how that your body is not just material. Your body is also energy. And that part of you... I call, I consider your soul, that part of you that is like energy. You know how that you're in a gathering and you're like, I don't want negative energy. I don't want negative vibes. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. That part of you is energy and you relate with it every day. You connect with it every day. It forms part of your physical and material experience. Even though you cannot feel it, even though you cannot see it, even though you cannot touch it, guess what? It is there. And it forms a part of your life. It creates your circumstances. It molds your material world. And you cannot be ignorant of that part of you. You cannot be ignorant about how it works. And the fact that it actually functions. And guess what? You know, I, I, I discovered something recently while I was doing some study about this subject. And if you, if you try to weigh a, a clock that is functioning... I mean, a working clock, and you try to weigh a clock that is not working. A clock that is working actually has more, weighs more than a clock that is not working. Now, what do I mean? Meaning that you have a clock that is functioning, and then there's a clock that is not functioning at all. Why would it weigh more? After all, they, they, they have the same components. After all, they have the same objects. And then when you weigh those objects one after the other, they're supposed to have the same weight. Guess what? Let me tell you why. Because the object that is functioning is generating some energy from friction, meaning that the, the wheels of the clock that are moving, that are rubbing against each other, is, is generating some friction between the engine between that system, and that system is generating energy. Now, that energy is equals to mc squared. So E, remember, is equals to mc squared. So E is equals to m, given c squared is a constant. So energy is mass. Mass is energy. And so that is why, even though they have the same components, they can weigh different because E is equals to m. Energy is mass. So that part of you that is energy is also you, and it is part of you, and you must be conscious of it. And the world that you see is made from that world that you cannot see, that energy world. And science like we know it today affirms it to be so. So st studying quantum physics or quantum mechanics goes down to the very basic form of your material existence. When you break down an atom into its very smallest form, the only thing there is nothing. I mean, it's just nothing. And when I say nothing, like non-material, not like nothing, because if I'm gonna touch it, I will call it energy. I wouldn't call it matter because it's not a particle. So when it substantiates and becomes a particle and then and you can actually locate it in time and space you can now say is material but in its energy state it's also matter everything is energy everything is energy and you see the beautiful the beautiful understanding about energy is the fact that oftentimes in science when science wants to talk about anything that is spirit the only word they find to associate with spirit is the word energy 
But, you know, really, from the word of God, we know that spirit is more than energy. And the reality of who you are is that you are not just a body. You have a body, a soul, and a spirit. And when we see the way physics is presented to us today from the quantum physics perspective, we can realize that we are more than what we see. We have more on the inside. It's not just about this physical body. There is more on the inside. There is more to you as a man. There is more to you than what you can see on the outside. You have an inner being. You have a soul. You have a spirit. That spirit is the one that God connects with. That spirit is the one that God talks to. That spirit is the one that the word of God is alive to. And you see, the beautiful thing is that the scripture brings the reality of life to us. As much as we can relate with science and we can trust science, we should trust more on the word because the word has been way before any scientific discovery. And guess what? Every scientific discovery has its foundation in the word of God. You can be sure of that. You know, so look at yourself and think about yourself as not just a physical being. You are more than a man. You are more than a physical outward man. The scripture talks about the inner man of the heart and how that you are more than a physical being. And today we see it in science that you have an energy part of you. There's an energy part of you that connects with other energies, that relates with other energies, other people. And then as you understand the concept of energy, you realize that it's more than energy. It's actually spirit. And, you know, in subsequent topics and episodes in this season on Science of the Gospel, we're going to talk about energy. We're going to talk about so many amazing things in science and their connection with the Word of God. So you want to really stay hooked to everything we're going to be talking about. This is the foundation. And, you know, there's so many exciting things to talk about. And there's just so much we can take in one episode. But more importantly right now is looking at yourself and asking yourself, really, in your spirit, where are you? Who are you? What are you? What is the reality of who you are on the inside? I mean, if today science is telling you that you're not just a physical body, there's an energy part of you, there has to be something more. There has to be something more on the inside. And you know what? The, the Lord, by his spoken word, created the whole world. And he created man. He created you. He created me. And he didn't just create us as bodies. He created us as human spirits. And that human spirit is what he seeks to have a fellowship with. Is that human spirit that science calls energy, but we know that it's not just energy, it's more than energy, it's spirit. It's not just energy. It's more than energy, it's spirit. It's spirit. And that is your spirit, your soul. Because really, your soul and your spirit are really intertwined. And you really cannot see it with your optical eyes. You cannot touch it, you cannot hold it. But it's there, and you know it. But you see, if this spirit doesn't have any connection to God, if it's not connected to the creator, the spirit is not alive. Yeah, it might be walking in the world, but in the reality of life, where life really exists in the unseen realm, like we have seen in scriptures in Hebrews, in the unseen realm, it's not alive. That spirit is not alive, but it has to be alive to God. That you in you, there is a you in you, there is a you inside of you that is not this physical body that you cannot touch. And then you can trust that science has said, yes, it's true, there is a you in you. And I know that you believe it. But that you in you, is it connected to God? That you in you, does it have a fellowship with God? That you in you, does it have a relationship with God? You're going to get a chance to have that connection today you watching me. If you want to have that connection with God, I want to give you an opportunity. And it's so simple. It's so easy. The Bible says if you can believe in your heart and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, you will be saved. What happens? Let me tell you what happens. Now, your spirit is changed and you are given a new spirit. Your body doesn't change. I mean, this physical body. I mean, that's the greatest miracle that can happen to anybody. And all this actually happens in the spirit. And guess what? That spirit has the ability to also influence and impart your physical body. 
that's a topic for another day. We're going to talk about that much more later in the series of this show. But if you want to receive this new life, if you want to receive this new spirit, wherever you are, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to say this prayer. I want you to believe that God is going to hear you because the Bible says with the heart man believes unto righteousness and confession is made unto salvation. When you say these words, believing in your heart that Jesus died and he was raised by the glory of the Father, you will receive that new spirit that gives you eternal life and that makes you connected with God forever. Are you ready? Close your eyes and say this prayer after me. Say, oh Lord God, I thank you for sending Jesus to die for me. I believe that he died and he was raised by the glory of the Father. I confess today that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life from this day. Through him and in his name. I receive eternal life. I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Hallelujah. If you just said that prayer, yay, you are born again. You have received eternal life and you have that spirit connected to God. Right now, we're just going to take a short break before we wrap up the show. And when we return, we'll wrap up everything we've discussed so far. Don't go away. Welcome back to the show. This is still Science of the Gospel. And if you are just tuning in, we are about wrapping up. But not to worry. You still have an opportunity to watch this show next week. And you can always get everything that the Spirit of God has in plan for you. If you give your heart to the Lord, I'm so excited. You can call any of the numbers showing on the screen and tell us that you gave your heart to the Lord. We would like to know you. We would like to contact you. We would like to send you some materials to help you grow in your faith. And, you know, there's so much to learn. There's so much to know in the word of God. And I'm so excited that, you know, I'm bringing this show to you from the science perspective. And remember to always give us your, give us your feedbacks. You can, you know, send an email to the email showing right on your screen. Tell us what you gained from the show, how it was impactful. If you have any testimonies, we would like to hear from you. I would like to hear from you. And I would also like to sometimes read your feedback to you. So I want to hear from you. Send it to me. Next, we're going to be having another exciting time talking about another amazing topic that has to do with science and connecting it with the scriptures. But I hope you enjoyed today's show. I remain your ever-excited host, Bookie Bash. Hope to see you next time, next week on the show. God bless you. <laughs>